Hello everyone, uh, here we are again, kind of a, a follow-up to the last video about my surgery, my hernia. And so we're one step further. We're one step down the line <laughs> in the process. And uh, I almost, I was just saying, I don't know if I want to do this video, but I really want to do this video. It's just a little quick update. It, and it's important, and I know some of you are curious, so let, let's do this. Um, so there has been so much apprehension on my part. I know I'm probably making a mountain out of a molehill, but it, but well, it's the, he's never been put under or had a surgery, like a major surgery. It's the fear. He did have, his, he did have your toe removed, but the fear of the unknown. And there's yeah. an ironic thing. I'm going to the same surgical center yeah. where I had my toe amputated. Uh, and I, I kind of can't really call that. It's, I guess it's a surgery, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. yeah. This, this is thoracic surgery. So, uh, I don't really remember exactly all that was said in the first video, but I let you all know that I had suddenly one night a hernia. I just felt it. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. This is, something's wrong. Because I had been, all feels... day my guts felt pain, kind of painful. Yeah. Inflamed. My lower abdomen. I kept telling you just have gas. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like in the belt, in the belt area. But then it, then it kind of. Came, it was an aching over here, and I thought, oh, my God, I have a hernia. And I pressed in there, and something went, Boop. So we went through all that. And then I went, told you I went to my doctor's appointment, my GP, to get a referral. I'm not, trust me, I don't understand how all this stuff works. I don't, I never, I still don't really understand why you have to go to one doctor to get permission to go to another doctor. I don't like that. I don't like the way the system works, but that's the way it works. I, guess. I think it's just because they don't want people self-diagnosing and then going to these other doctors and then they get there and they're kind of gunking up their system oh, with that makes something sense. that okay, is okay. not related. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. See, leave it to you to make sense of it. So, I think. And others would say, they just want to make more money. <laughs> yeah, and, in, and a lot of money it is. I haven't, it does, yeah. I haven't had any procedures it's yet and I'm into this for a $1,000. Because I had to go to my GP and pay 150 or so, and I had to go in today for a consult for 260, and then I prepaid some money for the doctor's fee. So okay, so let's try to get through this rather quickly. But I want to tell you what happened along the way because it's fascinating and and mind-boggling to me. So. I told you I didn't want to go to the surgeon. Didn't I go through that? You didn't want to go to the PA. I didn't want to go to the... Okay, so I called to set up my consultation with this doctor. That you, he was referred to originally from his GP. Right. And they said, they said, no, you got to... It's, it's with the... It's with the... PA. PA. And I said, I don't want to go to a guy that's not going to do the surgery for my consult. Well, it's because they wanted to get you in quickly, and it's and then is it then that I went to the to the internet to look at the reviews of the surgeon? Yeah. Oh God. He had made the appointment with the actual surgeon, and then went and looked at his reviews, and they were not good. Well, yeah. I mean, there were a lot of good ones, and there yeah. were some really bad ones about how which arrogant. you're going to expect, I think, in with anything you're going to yeah. expect. There's got to be some bad ones. So here I am doing my due, due diligence, and this is why it's important for people not to focus on their complaints. Yes, you need to remove the stumbling stones for others that come after you, but if you have, if you're just find yourself being a whiny person that complains about everything, maybe you shouldn't do that. Uh, because there were complaints about this doctor saying things like, it's a shame such a gift, is such a gifted surgeon is wasted on a, that personality. Well, that's not a really helpful per, helpful uh, review for somebody that needs yeah. surgery, yeah. not a, a friend. A good surgeon. Yeah, a good yeah. surgeon, not a buddy. Exactly. So uh, there were things like that. So anyway, I went and I kept doing my, my due diligence. I asked people in the neighborhood. Somebody referred me to this surgeon that he said was par excellence. Best guy. He, he saved his life. He uh, had to have gallbladder removed and his doctors ended up having to do a cut down surgery where because a couple of arteries burst, all this stuff. Yeah. And yeah. he said this guy yeah. was saved his life because he happened to be at the surgical center and the other doctors were like, oh no, what do we do now? And he came in and patched everything up and fixed it. <laughs> so I go and look this guy up 
terrible reviews. The same, he had the same bad, kind of bad yeah. reviews as the surgeon I'd been referred to. Anyway, so then I'm going through all this, finding my own surgeon. This is a long story. <laughs> I found a surgeon that it's I like who had five star reviews. He had, a, he had only, only five or six, but they were all five stars, and they were talking about what a great gifted surgeon he was. And great bedside manner. Great bedside. He was the whole package. Yeah. So I called my uh, GP's office, and I said, I want to be referred to this guy. I don't, like, I don't like the reviews of the guy that my doctor is sending me to. And they were taken aback. They were like, what's the matter? I said, well, I explained the whole thing. And I said, I don't want to go to that guy. I want to go to somebody who's nice and good. Yeah. So. And they're probably like, people read reviews? Yeah. And it makes a difference? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So get this. <clears throat> I'm waiting. And then I'm waiting. I'm wa and I went and I called them the next day. I said, they haven't gotten your fax yet. The referral. I need to get this. What are you doing? Send the. F we sent the fax right after you came in. We said. And I, I keep calling this office, the scheduler's office for the surgeon. No, we haven't gotten it yet. No, we haven't gotten it yet. And then she sent it with you on the phone again. So I went back to my my doctor and they said, we're sending it again. And we'll try the different fax number. And then I called the next, that day, nothing. Called the next day. I said, the girl kept saying, we haven't gotten it yet. I said, what do you mean? You need to start explaining what you mean you haven't gotten it. It is a fax. You're getting a fax. Yeah, that, she said, sometimes it takes days to come through. And we're I like, said, that doesn't make any sense. It's that's, that's There is no way. And Basically, she's, that's so what a fax is. I've called this girl five times over days, and I'm sitting here holding my hernia in. She finally says, she comes back to me after a couple of minutes and says, oh, okay, we found it. <laughs> this was maddening <laughs> literally i'm holding myself together and then she and i and i just i kind of let go a little bit yeah i was very angry i said what do you mean you found it why couldn't you find it and i explained my situation i said you know i'm a human being right i'm a human being who finds himself important just like you find yourself and your problems important I said, I have a medical situation that's kind of like almost a crisis thing, and you're not doing your job. You're not capable of getting me the information that I need and doing this exchange. What the hell is wrong? What's the breakdown? And she said, I'm sorry, sir. I said, sorry doesn't cut it. I've been waiting days for you to find this thing you say hasn't come through. So, Well, anyway, then she then says... Then she put the supervisor on No, the then she says... Oh, well, are you She says, self are you, She said, oh, are you self-pay, sir? I said, yes, I'm self-pay. She said, I'm sorry, we, we can't take any self-pay. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> stratosphere. I couldn't. That's when you got I mad. blew up. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I, I kind of want to apologize to that girl. She said, she kept, she's apologized a few times. I said, this is ridiculous. And I said, she got the supervisor on the phone, the supervisor apologizes, and then she says, we have to train people. I said, well, that girl has not been trained. I said, the, one of the things that is most critical right now and obvious that you need to train her is to tell, to ask people when they call and say, I haven't gotten a call yet. Have you gotten my referral? To, tell, to ask them if they're self-pay at that point. Hello. Or maybe the first phone call. Asking While I have you on the phone, yeah, sir, may yeah. I ask you if you're self-pay? Because if you are, there's no point in you holding your guts in and waiting. Uh, so, here we are. <laughs> I was furious. That was yesterday. It was yesterday. And, uh, and then I felt bad about you fussing at people. And I always tell you people, be loving, be patient. God bless it. So, <laughs> practice what you preach. Yeah. So anyway, I I finally said, okay, I can't do this anymore. And I and I called and I said, I'm going to take that appointment with that PA. They said he's a lovely man, you'll really like him. Finally Everybody likes him. Jennifer and really I went in. Him, yeah. He and it turns out he's going to be in helping. He's going to help with the surgery. In the he surgery. Takes three hands for the and, surgery. And so I talked to him, he assuaged all my fears and he made some things even better. He said Yes, we do laparoscopic. Yes, it's outpatient. No, you cannot be conscious for this. You don't want to be conscious for this. Yeah. We're going to go in through your belly button. And when he said that, I was like, what? 
<laughs> well, why? He said, that's where we do it. They that's go where... in and they put air in there, like a balloon type thing, where they open up a cavity so they can see everything. And he said, and while we're just... in there, we're going to look at the other side, too. Yep. And... He said, and your belly button. He said, so we're going in through your yep. belly. He said, I said, I have a hernia there, right? He said, yes, you do have a hernia in your belly. I, I said, it's been there all my life. It's very sensitive. I don't mess with it. I don't appreciate you touching it like you just did. <laughs> I don't even let my wife touch it. But he said, yes, you have a hernia there. And while we're in there, when we're coming out, we're going to sew that up for you, too. Yeah, we'll fix that, and it'll probably be less sensitive. And you may have more of an any. And I was like, wait, <laughs> what? Are you... I couldn't believe my luck. I was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. They'll fix both sides. He said it, he if said they it, need it. He said if the other the, side is no. is compromised, they'll they'll repair that too. They'll put a stitch or two in the navel on the way out. And I, I was so thankful. Yeah. By the time this I say to you because I know if you're a lot of people are on here commenting, some of you are apprehensive about having your first surgery, some of you are it's your second or third rodeo you mm -hmm. know all about it and i appreciate your tips and stories also um one th major thing is he said that the mesh that they use now is nothing like the mesh that you hear about on the radio mm -hmm. that has failed it's completely different and your body doesn't even try and kick it out he said they've done 30 years of well i guess the past However many years. He they said they had haven't had one. Any problem. They haven't had one problem. Yeah. And he yeah. and you know, this guy seemed really straightforward. He, if not, he really was. Yeah. And uh, he said also infection. I was very I said, How sterile is this operating yeah. theater? Because I don't want anything getting in there. He said, I, I totally understand. He said, with in my twenty five years with this doctor, not one I've problem. never seen one infection. Oh one. He had one. They, they had, had one. one. What was that? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. And uh, he didn't try to explain it away. He just said there was there was one. So, all right. So we got we got all of these fears quelled. Um, what what other things was I concerned about? About not being able to do anything for a while after. Yeah. Anything. Oh, one thing that that concerned me is I have had bouts of sleep apnea, and I thought, well, geez, if they put you under, they're going to use this thing that's like a cow tranquilizer. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> propofil. It, the stuff that Michael Jackson was taking when he died. I thought it started with a D. No, I think it's propofil. Oh, okay. And this is a different version or lesser amount. But um, that's the mo one of the most expensive things is anesthesiologist. Yeah. Uh, but he said, no, nah, you're going to be monitored. He said, Tr trust me, you have people monitoring your breathing and your heart rate and all that. He said, so. We don't you, concentrate on that. We any issues there. And, and the whole thing is going to take 45 minutes, roughly. So, yeah, everything is cool. Yeah. Um, what other questions were there? I know you guys have lots of things that you're apprehensive about. Money is a big thing. Yeah. Um, it's so around it, 6, it can be around six thousand. I had read online as typically between six and eight, and the doctor. I'm thinking, oh, these surgeons, they're they're so rich and they they're so greedy. <laughs> the doctor's getting. Like five hundred and thirty-six dollars, the surgeon. The surgeon. Yeah. The t this is the guy doing it. <laughs> the anesthesiologist makes more than is taking in more than the doctor. I'm sure they got to pay all their. Everybody's got to pay, pay, pay anyway. Yeah. They got to pay these huge insurance bills, and you know they've got the facility. There's a lot. There's a lot here at your service when this is happening. Yeah. It's not just the. A back alley like a guy with a cart yeah you come i i do you come i do for you good price many good price and i give taco one so it's uh i'm so much more calm yeah i feel like i need to send out flowers to everybody I fuss with. so it's, it'll be uh two weeks and you'll be done so get this the day so I've had this little hernia here. This this has not been an issue. I've been accustomed to it. And it, it I don't do anything. That, I've strained and I've lifted. I've done hard labor all my life. I do so now even as an adult because I, I, I'm happy that I can do it. Yeah. Because I do a lot of my own work. Yeah. Um, but I've never had a real any real issue other than don't freaking touch it. 
Just yeah. don't just don't go near like the hernia <laughs> and I'm okay. But get this, it'll mm -hmm. be the day after I turn 60 that this is getting done and this navel thing. Yeah. It's bothered me all since the day I was born. It's been a, it's been the hernia. I'm assuming. Yeah. Till till my 60th birthday. So it's like a birthday present. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? I don't need to get you anything now, right? And she, <laughs> Farm Girl was so kind to come with me. It's good to have another set of ears because, uh, hey, look, there's a Seahawk. All right, that's it. That is the uh, the middle part of this journey. We wanted to share the, update. this with you. Yeah. Go to your consult. I really think that's an important it's an eye-opening part of the process. Yeah. And I wasn't aware how of how eye-opening and how calming it would be. Mm -hmm. So they will... Uh, and they, they weren't worried, like, saying, you got to get in here right now. Yeah. So... Yeah. So the farm girl gets to make her trip to South Carolina. We, she was going <laughs> to postpone that if, if, we want, if I wanted to do it sooner, which yeah. is ridiculous. Well, so we're good. It's yeah. two weeks, less than two weeks away. Yeah. And then we'll do an update, and I'll let you, hopefully I'll be okay. I'll be around. It's a little more than two weeks. Yeah. I, yeah two really? weeks and two days. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you have an issue, get it taken care of. Definitely. All right. It's not as it's not it's it's not going to be as bad as you think. Yeah. <laughs> Take care.